Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Happy Monday. Happy Monday everybody. Hope everybody had uh, a good uh, trading day. A lot of really great action today, uh, especially uh, in the first, you know, the first two hours of the day. Very, very aggressive. Then the market kind of uh, went a little bit sideways. But uh, again, what, what I really like about this tape right now, uh, again, when we talked about um, on the nightly video, on the weekend update, was that, again, there is a lot of uh, optimism, right? Not only just for Corona, for there's a possible anecdotal vaccine, whatever the case may be, but but again, the prosperity aspect, the economic aspect. And today you woke up, uh, futures were up. Uh, there was news that the White House um, was considering fast tracking or giving the blessing for AstraZeneca uh, for you know, some, some sort of vaccine help. Who, who the hell knows? You got to go through all these news headlines with a fine line. The point is, again, whether this was true or not true, AstraZeneca uh, came out after and said, hey, by the way, we've never spoken to anybody in the White House. Again, it doesn't make a difference. This market is shoot first, ask questions later. Uh, prosperity. Okay, on the horizon, people getting back to work on horizon. And again, what's great about uh, all these headlines is we actually heard headlines throughout uh, the day that this is the first time the, the United States saw a dip in corona cases, which is fantastic. And as you can imagine, you know, just like the stars of the show have been uh, beta in the high tech revolution, it was great to see today that the companies that got really killed by Corona, uh, the airlines, um, the cruise ships, okay, the hotels, anything with leisure, the restaurants, they all rallied today. And that was a kind of a big deal. And it really does show again that, again, prosperity, hope, and optimism is alive. But if these companies can actually do their thing and be completely 100% operational, well, then this bull market will have a tremendous amount of higher probability that it will go higher in the near future. And that's exactly what we saw today. Uh, and if you look at the final scoreboard, you see a pretty big move here. 28,000, uh, 28,300. This is the first close um, in the 28,000s. I think prior to February, this was actually a month before that horrific month of March with destruction of stock prices. Uh, NASDAQ, again, uh, reached all-time highs. But, but I think today's session, again, was very, very blessed on the idea that maybe one day we could actually go to a restaurant, sit all together, maybe have a drink, maybe go to a movie together, right? And again, the idea of going back to, back to normalcy, and, I, and again, for all of us who've been pretty much on house arrest, for the last eight, nine months, the little things, right? Taking your kids to a ball game, taking your kids to an amusement park, hell, just getting a drink with a friend of yours, right? These are all little things that, you know, eight, nine months ago was like, ah, what's the difference? We'll do it next week. I would love to do it now. You know, forget about the fat idea of going on vacation, right? Vacation right now is, I would, I would cut off my mother-in-law's, you know, pinky toe to go on vacation. Uh, but the moral of the story is there's a lot of hope a lot of optimism, and again, if hope and optimism can catch up to actually the reality of finally controlling this disgusting, nasty uh, pandemic that's known as COVID, okay, life as we know it would be absolutely smelling like roses. So that was the great part about today. Uh, what I liked about today also for the side of um, the side of kind of the rotations, again, you, you can see where the money flow went today. Uh, anything that got hit really woke up. And again, they're definitely setting up kind of a day two run. Uh, crew lines were very, very strong. Uh, CCL, RCL, uh, NAUH, oh, excuse me, wrong stock. NA, what was it? Nordic, whatever the hell it was. was. Uh, airlines, very, very strong. Boeing had a nice move today. I traded some Boeing today as well. Um, when you see the casino stocks waking up, win MGM. So again, hope to optimism, you know. Uh, so again, good stuff. Uh, beta today was a little bit odd. Um, I, I came in today, again, if you guys watched the video like yesterday, I came in today with a very, very specific plan. Um, I, was, I was not looking at Tesla. I really wasn't looking at Apple today. I really wasn't looking at NVIDIA. I was looking at Alibaba. I was looking at Amazon. I was looking at Netflix. And, you know, this potentially, like I said in the video, could have been a really monster, monster appreciation of, of these stocks. And as much as they were good, and when I say they, uh, Alibaba was pretty good, uh, Facebook was pretty good, Amazon was great. And the funny thing is, I, ha I had a conversation with somebody after the close, 
and they're like, man, I'm really disappointed at what Amazon did today. I'm like, what was your highest sale? It goes oh, up, up about 38 points. May your worst trade be a trade that you make 38 points, right? Again, Amazon was great out the gate. Um, was good, was really, really good. So let that be your absolute worst trade. But I get kind of where he was coming from, right? The fact that everything kind of translated into, um, into the leisure, right? Into leisure restaurants, casinos, it actually took the money flow out of kind of the stay at home play. And even though a name like Amazon, a name like Netflix, right? They're really not stay at home names. They got a lot of, you know, they took advantage of the whole stay at home movement. But let's be honest here. What is, you know, if, if Amazon will be okay, no matter what happens, Amazon will be all right. And it took a little bit of, it took a little bit of the wind out of the sails of the names like Netflix, of the names like, like Amazon. And although this day turned out to be very, very good, you kind of want to know what could have been, right? What could have been if Amazon just would have confirmed those opening range highs after 10 o'clock? Again, I know a lot of you guys uh, caught this trade for anywhere from 40 to 60 points. And again, let that be your worst trade ever. But at the same time, I kind of get it, okay? Because again, if when, once we started seeing this morning 34, 35, 3600 weekly calls coming out of Amazon, and then you saw at one point the stock actually went red, two things really stuck out. Number one, as I always say, there's no guarantees, okay? Always take money on the way up. Use break even as you stop. Again, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. Because if, again, we were a 1,000% certain, we would have went in both hands. Everything would have been great. We would have mortgaged our homes, our kids' future to be all in the trades. So again, there's no such thing as sure things, guys. Always take money when it's available to you. Again, because, again, if it was, you know, 100% slam dunk, would be gazillionaires, gazillionaires for God's sake, right? So again, always take stock on the, on the way up. Uh, Macro-wise, again, market looks uh, very, very good. Uh, what I also like about today's session, not only did uh, the money flow go into the rotational bias of these uh, leisure names, they also, you also started seeing a lot of speculation money wake up. And if you see these like acquisition companies, uh, for all you guys who don't follow them, I, I kind of follow them. You know, I, I have an idea of what's up with them. But if you look at some of the names that woke up, they weren't like you know two, three, four hundred dollars stocks. They were ten, twelve, fifteen dollars stocks. Uh, SPAQ again, one of these uh, acquisition names up a, do a dollar and change. Uh, FMCI, right? Another name had broke out of the channel. I still like it going into tomorrow. Um, what else was there? SPAQ, FMCI. Uh, what was the other one? Shill, Shill, Shill was the other one. S H L L. So they had a lot of big aggressive money flow. Um, so that was very, very good. So it really does show you that people are still willing to speculate. Um, a lot of call buying again. Different names like Angie, for example. Really good looking names. And and again. The, what's great about this market is you might not get your cup of tea or the drug of choice today or tomorrow, but eventually you'll get it. And you, as you can see, uh, as you can see by kind of this little little minute breakdown of what happened today is, again, if you are patient, okay, and you don't deviate from your process and all that good stuff, again, eventually your research and patience will get rewarded. So going into tomorrow... I'm obviously bullish. Again, look, can they can they pull? They you know they pulled Tesla today at one point, right? You know, again, they pulled it down at one point. They pulled it down, uh, Apple at one point today. Nvidia got pulled down at one point. They're still very very healthy. Is it possible they could have a day two kind of flush? Listen, it's all possible. As I said today in the live webinar, I would rather concentrate on the strong names while um, while speculation money is still here, then try to fight with an Apple, try to fight with an NVIDIA, really, really strong names to maybe possibly get a good trade while I know this is still a good bull market, two, 300 points up today in the Dow, and there's always going to be aggressive dip buyers. Again, there's, there's always a place for something in the market. I think at this juncture, unless they pull down the whole beta group tomorrow, again, I'd rather continue uh, to keep my focus, stay with my attention to names that are very, very aggressive, about to come out of channels and making sure they confirm uh, with the wind behind their back, not against it. So uh, let's talk about today's session. Again, pretty aggressive here. Um, again, most important part, and again, uh, Zoom had an issue this morning. They had a, a, a global 
uh, disruption, okay, uh, Zoom um, webinars or conferences, what do you want to call it. So uh, originally we were going to start the day on the Twitter feed, and then uh, right before they opened, uh, Zoom finally started working again. Uh, but this was kind of my comments. Uh, big gap in the futures. Remember, second entries on everything, especially uh, especially for you new folks who are not in the live webinar. Again. You, you, you're not, you don't have, you, you don't have the, you don't have the privy the, of hearing me speak every single second of the day. I'm literally giving commentary on every single potential trade while we're in the trade, while we're out of the trade, in the middle of the trade, every aspects of it. So on, on the Twitter feed, it's, it's, a, you, you lose a little bit in translation, but only looking at hard prices. So it's very, very important that we made sure that everybody looks, continues to look uh, at second entries. Don't anticipate the trade. Take on the way up. Use break even as you stop. Good morning. So uh, Amazon was definitely my first trade of the day, my, my biggest mover of the day by far. Uh, Amazon 33.24 and 33.45, big macro areas need to build. Amazon exploded. And, and again, uh, you know, as we joked around with my buddy on the phone, you know, again, 38 points for you. Oh, so bad, right? My highest sale was also in the highest 50s. It's okay. 30 points is still 30 points. But here's the whole channel right here uh, going back all the way to uh, August the 19th. Uh, here is the 825 level, uh, 33.45 is the 52 week high, and it exploded, just absolutely exploded, went to 33.80. Yeah, was, is this disappointing? Okay, to each his own, right? To each his own. Uh, Netflix, I get long Netflix. I, I thought this was going to be the next one to go. I get long Netflix. It only goes up a dollar. Now, usually I would make some sales just to get a little bit of cash flow, but I was so convinced that Netflix was gonna go, like really, really so convinced. So here is the whole whole channel here. So this 499, 500 area, it goes to 501. I don't make any sales because I'm thinking, I'm looking at the chart and I'm saying to myself, okay, my premise is playing out. Amazon is going, Alibaba's breaking out. We'll get to Am Alibaba in a second. This thing has a shot to get the 510. Why sell some at 501 if you think this is gonna go higher? And I made that choice and unfortunately, that was the top of the day. So I wound up breaking even on Netflix and obviously again, uh, when we talk about trading with uh, conviction, trading with uh, control, that also makes making really adult, aggressive decisions. Sometimes, hey, you got to get out of the trade. Uh, we saw a big bidder there. It was like 15, 20,000. Usually when you see a 15, 20,000 share bidder on Netflix, especially the way it's been trading with lack of liquidity, we could have been having this conversation $10 higher. So I wanted to give this stock every opportunity uh, to go to, to live with prosperity. Unfortunately, a lot of beta names did get pulled, especially got thrown into the whole uh, stay at home revolution, yada, yada, yada. I broke it even on the trade and the stock at one point uh, went, went all the way down to like 483. So this thing got murdered. Again, you have to make tough decisions to get out of a good hand. And that's exactly uh, what we did. Beyond got upgraded. I was looking for this 129.75, 130 break, never came close. Uh, Roku, I was looking for the upside, never came close. Uh, good job for all you guys who were uh, trading uh, Alibaba. I missed this trade because I was in the Netflix. I took Netflix instead of Alibaba, uh, which kind of sucked, but it is what it is. For experienced traders, uh, 2750s, rising support, never got there, but it started remounting. 274.30 needs to build and put up a $3 candle. And I still obviously like Alibaba going into tomorrow's session. Again, broke out here. We talked about this on the weekend video. Uh, tomorrow, we are looking for either our, um, a rising dip on the 60 minute support or, um, or a remount above today's high. So we'll talk about that as well. Uh, Facebook 273 needs to build. Here is Facebook. Right, so here's the two, 273, right here, 273, and the stock went all the way to 277. Really, really good move there. Again, for some reason, it got taken down with the whole stay, stay at home movement crowd. Don't ask me why. Uh, RKT, I thought it was over, overbought. I was looking for the 24, 30, 24 pivot, never came close to that. Uh, Adaptic never came close to 44. NVIDIA never came close to 518. Uh, NKLA, uh, again, 39 was Friday's low. If it builds below, it can flush. Nice move on NKLA. Here was NKLA, right? Here comes the 39 and traded all the way down to 37. I still like it. I think if it starts rebuilding down uh, below 37, it should go lower. But a $2 move on a $39 stock, pretty damn good. Uh, FSLY never got close to the 93 level. Uh, Square never got close to the 160 level. And again, I said Zoom is working now. Come back to uh, the live webinar. Um, so big move in Facebook. Take on the way up on Alibaba. 
Uh, again, good move. I mean, again, it's very, very hard to be upset with this trade, but I understand. I get it. I get it. I, I understand. Again, let's keep an eye on it for tomorrow. Maybe you'll have a day two uh, awakening, but I get it. I get it. Take on the way down on NKLA. Uh, Apple. So here is a funny trade on Apple. So I shorted Apple, right? 502, uh, 502.20, 502, right? And I said, if it builds below, it can flush. So I get short Apple, it goes down like 50, 70 cents very, very quickly. I don't have the ability, and I thought this is, it was gonna get down to the 497 level, okay? And so I short this thing, it goes down about 60, 70 cents, and, and it goes against me very, very quickly. I wound up losing about 95 cents, right? And it actually goes up to like 505. So what happens is I thought the damn thing was going to go down to 497. And at 497, I wanted the remount. I like, in other words, I wanted to go long. So I wound up losing 95 cents on the short. And then I get long. And then I get long Apple uh, right on this remount. You see this remount, guys? This is one of the better trades in the, in, by far today. Uh, so it remounted here perfectly. And it ran up almost $2 on the remount. Uh, so I made back, I made back my money on the short side as, so I, I netted out about a dollar 30 or so, but really, really good move on, on Apple on the remount. Um, it just, I wish I would have held a little longer because this thing really, uh, exploded. It actually went to 507. It's actually embarrassing that I, um, that I kind of messed up on it. Uh, Boeing, I traded as well. Uh, good, good move on Boeing. Uh, 174.80, 175 needs to build. So Boeing was good as well. I still like Boeing for tomorrow. So here's the, here's the build right here off the 75 and it really, you know, exploded up to like 78 and change. So now we're looking at macro numbers for tomorrow. You can see this, this whole macro area, if it confirms, it's going to go higher, but really good move on Boeing again. Uh, took advantage of the strength in the airlines and the cruise ships, so forth and so on. So that was good as well. Uh, take on the way up, like I said, 77 is 50-day supply went perfectly there. Um, yeah, might see, you know, might see 478 if the market gets hit. Yeah, it went to 477. Unfortunately, it's, it stopped me out on the way down. I actually made money back on the way up. Uh, so NKLA, perfect move to 37. Amazon, uh, oh, so there was another sneaky pivot on Amazon at lunchtime, 33.15, it went to like 33.24, and then everything came in, and actually Amazon went red. So overall, it was a pretty good, uh, pretty pretty solid session. Very happy with the session. Um, I think tomorrow, again, uh, let's look, continue to look at the leisure names. I'm also going to continue to look at these merger names. Um, I, I love Alibaba on dips. Um, I still like Alibaba on dips. I, I, I'm not really going to be Airlines, Boeing, I still I kind of like tomorrow. I'm not going to really focus on Tesla and Apple until they, uh, until they split, okay? And the reason why I'm saying that, there's just too much, there's too many hands in this jar, too many longs, too many shorts. They kind of need to clear out. I want to see kind of what happens next week uh, after both of them split um, and kind of make my decision there. I want to watch the average true range. I want to watch the liquidity. Obviously, I don't think liquidity is going to be an issue, but I want to see kind of the new mannerisms of both of these names. So overall, a really good start to the week. Um, guys, have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, guys.